So I, I also want to thank uh, Julio and the, and the organizers for the invitation. So I'm going to talk today a little bit, very briefly, obviously, about some of the challenges um, in India related to scaling up treatment as prevention. So a lot of the challenges, of course, that India faces are common challenges that we've talked about a lot over the past couple of days. We see low rates of HIV testing. We see poor linkage to care. People present very late. Um, and we've seen some improvement in terms of initiation once people get in the door, at least in private clinics, that people actually are initiating more rapidly. But we still have insufficient coverage. So approximately 30% of those who need ART are being treated. And again, there has been massive scale up as there have been, has been in many places through the Indian uh, government rollout. And we have approximately 300,000 persons on ART, um, but this is still lower than what it should be. So what I wanted to focus on are some of the challenges that are really unique, I think, to India, but, but, but can be also extended to, to other places. So if we start with the seek and test part of the paradigm, I think one of the challenges India faces is this changing epidemiologic risk profile. So India has historically had a heterosexual epidemic. 84% of infections are estimated to be driven by sexual transmission. And it still represents a large burden of the infections, but when we look at incidents, we see changes. So the incidents, due to kind of remarkable efforts by the government and NGOs among heterosexual at-risk populations, has actually declined. But we see, we're seeing concomitant increases in MSM populations all over the country, and we're seeing IDU epidemics emerge in settings outside of the Northeast where the early injection drug use epidemics in India were. And if we look at testing rates in these populations, if they're low overall, they're even lower in these populations. And stigma plays an even larger role in these populations. So in some of our data um, from the south where I work, uh, we looked at IDUs that were enrolled in a cohort study in 2006, about 1,200, and none of them had been previously tested for HIV when they enrolled in our cohort study. Um, in a similar study of MSM in 2008, there were about 800 MSM, less than 50% had been previously tested. And so I think the first step that we need to take is we need to figure out where the burden is. So we know we have some mapping of high-risk heterosexual populations and a little bit with respect to MSM and IDU, but I don't think we know exactly where the hot spots are, and so I think we need to start there. If we move then to the treat and retain, I think one of the challenges and potential opportunities is public versus private sector healthcare delivery in India. So the government rollout that I mentioned operates primarily through the public sector, and so that's where people receive ART. But the private sector is a major source of ART prescription. And in general, in India, there's this, this dichotomy. People actually always prefer to go to the private sector. So if you have money, you go to the private sector. There's this perception that there's more confidentiality, the services are better, and you don't have to wait in line for four hours. But I think we've underutilized this, this sector where a lot of care is being distributed. And I think there's a need and an opportunity for public-private partnerships, particularly if we want to treat more than we're already treating. And I think one of the main reasons for doing this is that the current government programs, the public programs, just don't have the capacity to sustain who's on treatment now and to scale up to more people. And, and I think the things we see in India are things that we see everywhere. So shortage of drugs is a major problem. There are often reports of stockouts, and obviously if there are stockouts and people don't get their drugs, that impacts adherence. I think this was mentioned on the first day, but I think regimen choice is a huge issue. I think if we're gonna treat more people, we have to think about what we're treating with. And I think widespread use of stavudine and lamivudine monotherapy in a country where there's endemic hepatitis B and, and tuberculosis is still problematic. So I think we need to think, think about the regimens. Um, second line treatment is not widely available as it isn't available in most places. Um, people wait, again, as I mentioned, in the government centers in long lines. Um, the, the staff, the clinicians, the counselors have a huge burden. And so again, that impacts retention um, in care if you have to go and wait in these long lines. I think there's limited equipment and infrastructure. There have been reports of kind of CD4 equipment failing. Obviously, viral load is not done um, in, in any of these centers um, for monitoring. And so again, I think there are a lot of challenges to scaling up and treating more. So I think if we're gonna do this, we have to think about extending efforts to the private sector. So I present a lot of challenges, so I wanted to present one potential solution. There obviously is a lot of good work going on in India and, and a lot of things that different people are doing, but this is just one thing that, that we've started in, in collaboration with Greg Lucas and Sunil Solomon. This is um, a proposal for now. It's still being reviewed um, as part of the, the new NIDA Seek, Test, and Treat initiative. And what we're proposing is to actually, through a public-private partnership, establish integrated care clinics. Um, to deliver the nine WHO recommended services for IDUs, so integrating treatment and prevention efforts in one center. And we're gonna test the effectiveness of this strategy through a community randomized trial in five pair matched sites um, all over India. And we're gonna measure community level outcomes, so things like increased voluntary counseling and testing uptake, 
increased uptake of ART, community viral load, and then of course uh, HIV incidence. Thank you.